very rarely does a phone hit the office where I'm not necessarily too excited about because I know what to expect from it. And the Pixel 3 was one of those devices. We ordered it, it came in, and I was excited that it was here, but I wasn't necessarily excited about what the phone package was like for a few different reasons. Well, I am pleasantly surprised to tell you that uh, my opinion of that has drastically changed, and I am indeed very excited about the Pixel 3 in general as a smartphone. My name is Alex Simpson Tech. Welcome to the channel, and we're going to talk about the Pixel 3 today in our full review. So first off, I wanted to make a disclaimer that we did purchase this with our own funds. We also did receive the Pixel 3, two of them actually, from Google in that extravagant reviewers package. It's a gift from Google. They sent it to us. And Lita is reviewing the Pixel 3 XL, which should be out around the same time as this video. Um, but I just wanted to make that disclaimer. We purchased this Pixel 3. Google gave us a Pixel 3 XL. They are not paying us for our opinions. They're not watching this review prior. And they're not watching Lita's review either. So... I just needed to tell you guys that. Uh, but regardless of the fact, I personally like smaller phones. Uh, that's why I was a huge fan of Sony's and their compact lines and also Sharp for the compact lines. Uh, smaller phones are dying, and they're a dying breed. The Pixel 3 is by no means a small phone, especially from older year standpoints. Uh, it is a small phone by 2018 standpoint, uh, from 18, 2018 perspective. Um, the Pixel 3 has a 5.5 inch screen, it's a 1080p screen, uh, very acceptable colors and it, it looks like a very solid screen. We're just gonna go off of that right now. Uh, but there are bezels around there, which surprisingly doesn't match the Pixel 3 XL. And this is where I have a bit of, um, a, a, bit of a, a complaint to Google. Keep it uniform, right? You're, it's, okay, let's use the 10s and the 10s Max for an example, right? They're two phones that uh, use the same processor, same line, one's just bigger than the other. That should be the case for the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL, but no, they look aesthetically different on the front, and uh, I think that's a very bad design choice. I really do think the Pixel 3 should have had a notch. If the Pixel 3 XL had a notch, Pixel 3 should have a notch, or... Pixel 3 doesn't have a notch. Pixel 3 XL should not have a notch either. You got to keep it uniform in the same line. Same generation has to have the same type of design. I feel like that should have been what happened here. Um, in terms of what's going on with the notch on the Pixel 3, since there is no notch, we do have thicker bezels. It's only a 77% screen to body ratio, which is really low by 2018 standards. You're getting phones that have screens that warp all around and the bezels are really dying. This one is 77%, which is yesterday, 2014-15 um, numbers here. Um, but aside from that, the screen quality is fine. Uh, unlike the iPhone XR, which I was also using side by side with this phone, uh, it's, it's pretty durable. I I've read that this phone has like scratching issues and people were scratching the heck out of this phone. Mine it has really held up. I'm, I'm pretty shocked to say that both the screen and the back, which we'll talk about in a second, it's held up. It hasn't had any scratches, nothing noticeable that I could see. And it's same four or five days nakedness that I test out all the phones with. So uh, Pixel 3 durability for me, at least, with the same usage as all the other phones, it's, it's been able to hold up. Um... We're going to talk really quickly about the design of this, especially compared to the Pixel 2, right? So the Pixel 2 was not necessarily one of my favorite phones aesthetically. I really like the Pixel 1's appearance, but the Pixel 2, not so much. Like subtle changes, and a lot of people thought it was more refined. I personally really, for some reason, I really liked the glass window on the Pixel 1. They narrowed it down on the Pixel 2, and we have more of that same on the Pixel 3 here. Uh, it's basically a refined version of the Pixel 2. And so aesthetically, it looks very similar to last year's phone. Uh, they did change the material, though. Instead of like a like a harsher feeling back, it's much smoother. And it feels a little bit like, I would say, something like smooth rubber feeling. It, it's a really unique texture. Of course, it's glass, though. This is a, a dual glass phone. And uh, it also has Qi charging, wireless Qi charging, which works with the Pixel stand, which we'll review in another video. Lita's also going to talk about that in her review. But the Pixel 3, the new build of this phone is terrific. I absolutely love 
how this phone feels in your hand. The grip is much better than a typical slab of glass or something like aluminum. Whatever they're doing here with the, with the finish of this device, I like it, I really do. So Google, good job on that. Um, I do kind of feel like it's time for a little bit of modification with the design. Aesthetically, it could be a little different, uh, but that's a minor thing. I do think this is a very clean, fun phone. I also really like the aesthetics of the power button. I like that two-tone thing. I wish more manufacturers would do that where they have different colors instead of just one uniform color on the phone. Um, so I really do like the accents on the power buttons. With that out of the way, let's talk about the specs, right? So Snapdragon 845 with four gigabytes of RAM. That means that you're getting a flagship performance here towards the end of the year though, because uh, the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL, all the Pixels, all the Google lineup stuff are introduced at the end of the year. That means the Snapdragon 845 has been out for a, quite a long time. A lot of phones have had it. Um, and the processor is what you would expect. The 845 has not been issue driven. I haven't had much issues with this. I haven't had issues with 835 last year too. These two years have been very good for, for Qualcomm and the Snapdragon, the highest end Snapdragon line. And the Pixel 3 performs admirably. It's really good, really smooth. And the stock Android or stock Pixel experience now, because we have to make a distinguishment, right? Because stock Android and stock Pixel are different now. The launcher, the way we interact with the phone, it's different. And the Pixel 3 launcher and all its modifications and changes that I've covered in other videos, it's very good. This experience is top notch and it's my favorite Android experience. It really is. I've always been a homer for stock Android feeling or stock Pixel feeling now. And uh, I do think Pixel has really nailed, the, the Pixel 3 has really nailed it right down the line between how to utilize your software and your hardware and it's starting to do a little Apple. It's Apple-esque now. There's only four gigabytes of RAM here. It's not six, it's not eight, it's not 10. We're in 2018 and, and the flagship Android phone from Google only has four gigabytes of RAM. It's, it's reminiscent of Apple, what Apple does with three gigabytes of RAM on the iPhone XR. So it's pretty amazing that this phone is just as fast to the naked eye as the Galaxy S9, as something like the OnePlus 6 or like the iPhone XR. I, I feel like this phone is a very good performer. And other Snapdragon 845 phones have been as well, but this one, because it runs the Pixel stock Pixel experience, it just feels, it feels awesome. It feels really great. And the main reason you're probably looking at a Pixel 3 is for the camera. I, I can't overstate how great this camera is. I've mentioned this once or twice that there's certain generations, certain certain phones that you just absolutely can tell that it's a generation above everything else. I mentioned this uh, once. I talked about the LG G4 in another video. That was one of them. You use the camera on that and you're like, wow, nothing else on the market is like this. The camera experience is so much better. You can instantly tell by the results or the way you handle the camera. It's just so much better than everything else. And uh, even when the Pixel 2 came out last year, I thought it was a very good camera, but it wasn't that much better than iPhone 10. It was better in my opinion, but I wouldn't necessarily say it was that dramatically better than all the LG ones or all the other phones out there too. Pixel 3, it has a monumental gap in performance. I, I think the results on the Pixel 3 is amazing. And we're gonna have dedicated videos and, 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 and a lot of awesome stuff. Shot on white, we're gonna have episode two featuring a new hero. So check that out if you haven't seen that series yet. We're gonna do that with the iPhone XR and the Pixel 3. Uh, but Lita has a bunch of comparison videos as well and a lot of photos on Instagram and Twitter. So you, you, you've probably been watching us post stuff. But oh my gosh, the camera is just... I review probably like 20 phones a year, right? Now, nothing has come close. This thing is absolutely ridiculous. There were times optimal lighting I'm talking about, where I took a photo on this and on my Fuji X-T3. And honestly, if you didn't have the info tag on there and you put it on Facebook or Instagram, you might not be able to tell which was which. That's how good this camera is. And I know other phones can do that, but look, the AI that Google is using here, I can't say I understand everything. I can't say that I understand all of it and can explain it all. 
But what they're doing, the results are dramatically improved, even with just a single sensor they have here. It's one sensor. Some phones have five cameras on them. This has one on the uh, rear camera. It's unbelievable. And when you compare it to the iPhone XR, because it does, it's about the same price, and it does have one camera as well, the Pixel 3 just absolutely kills that camera. It's unbelievable what how big of a gap this generation the Pixel 3 has with its competitors. Really, you have to see it. You have to go and try it and use it out, taking some photos of basically anything. It's unbelievable. And that's not even before Night Sight. So Night Sight was an update that just happened. Um, they sent out a press release to us, and, and we, we got a chance to test it out before everybody else too. And the, and the Night Sight, it's unique. I, I don't understand where how they do this stuff too. It's pretty unique. But uh, the photo quality in low light is terrific, even without light, night sight. And it just takes the extreme dark situations a step further. That's unbelievable. Uh, so, yeah, the camera experience is just top-notch, guys. This is the best I've ever seen on a mobile device, period. It is absolutely terrific. So the one aspect of this phone that really holds it back is its battery life. It has a 2915 milliamp hour battery. What the heck is that it's underneath 3000 i don't even know how they got 2915 from that's a weird number but uh battery life has been average at best really three hours of screen on time which is what i consider right at the brink of acceptable uh be prepared to charge it you're going to be charging this phone if you're a heavy user you're going to charge it well before nighttime well before you probably end up back home uh if you're a light user you can probably squeeze out like four hours of screen on time with about 10 to 12 hours a day that's acceptable so this phone at least isn't the worst battery life i've seen over the years but i mean i i I was clearly expecting more and that is also one of the reasons why when i do the iphone 10r versus the iphone uh the pixel 3 video uh i'm spoiler alert iphone 10r kills this phone with battery life like i was getting almost triple the screen on time on the iPhone XR than I was on the Pixel 3. And I was very disappointed with this aspect of the Pixel 3. And I do suspect that a lot of people could see that as a deal breaker, me included. Um, I need my phone to stay alive for a lot of the stuff I do. And it's very disappointing that the battery life was so weak. What it comes down to with the Pixel 3 is this is the flagship Android phone that you're wanting and that you need. And this is uh, more of the same from Google. They've been improving not only the camera, but the software experience on the Pixel 3. And I do really like the new Android Pie experience. I know some people don't like the launcher and how you have to swipe up to go to the recent apps. It's grown on me, especially using gestures on the iPhone. Uh, if you have an iPhone in the past couple of years and you're used to the gestures, you're going to be right at home with this. And so I think Google is on the right path. I just think for the Pixel 4, if they change the aesthetics a little bit more, refine it a little bit more, keep the same materials because materials are great, uh, it'll be terrific. And I just really, really hope that the camera just keeps improving because this is absolutely a monumental phone before the camera. The camera experience is just terrific. And uh, if you are looking for the best mobile experience camera, there's no one better here than the, the Google Pixel 3. And I'm not, I'm really not trying to overstate that it is just you rarely hear me talk and praise a camera this much i I've, i never do this on on our channel i never go over the top about a camera and pixel 3 impressed me that much for me to s- dedicate so much time to talk about it then it obviously means that this phone's camera is really good uh so hopefully my um review has helped you guys and uh, if you have any questions, any comments you want to leave me about the Pixel 3 or the iPhone XR or what you want to see when I compare them, uh, leave a comment below and I'll see you guys in more videos very soon. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, hit the bell button below so that you don't miss a single video in the future. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!